Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. God is good. Shalom. This is another day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in this day. God is so good. Uh, we are rapidly approaching Christmas. Christmas. I've seen quite a few things on uh, Facebook that says uh, share or like if you still say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm like, yeah, Merry buddy. Christmas. I do Merry Christmas. Happy holiday. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to bash anybody that does happy holiday because you should enjoy and have a happy and joyous holiday. But Good I believe season. in Merry Christmas. And that word Christ stands out great. Amen. In Christmas. Amen. So we thank and praise the Lord for that. Today we're talking about joy to the world. Now, um, I know that, and you'll see it, there is a uh, definition of joy uh, in one of my favorite research criteria, Merriam-Webster. But if you had an opportunity to define the word joy as you feel joy should be defined, how would you define it? And this is not rhetorical. I want some answers. Anybody, how would you, you had an opportunity to define the word joy, how would you define it? I think joy is a constant state of just peace and inner happiness. Yeah. Peace and inner happiness. Inner happiness. Inner happiness. Anybody else? Yes. I think of a person, when you say that, I think of a person who is joyful, though. that's how I relate to it. Who is joyful, a person who is Joyful, amen. I like that too. Anybody else? I mean, the, the, the theme is pretty much, you know, succinct. I believe, you know, most people would would say it, and you know, so Merriam-Webster defines joy as the emotion. I didn't hear that word. Evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. A state of happiness or felicity. And a source or cause of delight. That one. You like that one too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think we all do. Now the world views joy, it is based on the physical aspect of a feeling that comes after someone or something meets their expectations. Example, somebody gives you something that you want and you're going to be joyous. Mm -hmm. That's actually a feeling of happiness. Because mm -hmm. God's joy goes beyond just a feeling. Amen. See, we, so that's why I asked you to define what you believe joy would be. And a lot of people, it's a feeling. But God's joy does go beyond a feeling. God's joy is an attitude of the heart. This is a heart issue. Because he's expecting you to have joy even when you don't feel like being joyful. Amen. And the only way you can have joy when you don't feel like being joyful, it's got to be centered in your heart. And that only comes by God. Because you can't drill that into your heart because you're so concentrating on the issues that are at hand in your life that you cannot understand what God's joy is all about. It goes beyond just your feeling. The Spirit of God gives joy that cannot be defined by what you expect or what you deserve. First Peter 1 and 8 says, You have never seen him, talking about Jesus, but you love him. Mm. Okay, yeah. You cannot see him now, but you are putting your trust in him. Amen. 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 And you have joy so great that words cannot tell. Amen. You can't even describe it. 
Amen. All because you trust him. In the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your turmoil, especially during this time of the season when you have maxed out your credit cards or if you ain't got no credit card, you look in your pocket and you turn them inside out and you got the rabbit ears. Because there ain't nothing in there. When you open up your wallet and that little moth flies out. Because there ain't no money. You open up the refrigerator and you think you got a ham and you got bologna. <laughs> but yet you're still supposed to have joy. That joy doesn't come by what you feel. That joy's got to come from God. And it's got to be seated right here in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart heart that's where it's got to come from so it doesn't matter what you have doesn't matter how you feel it's all about God what he has for you and has in store for you Romans 15 13 in the New Living Translation says I pray that God the source of hope the source of hope that's God he is the source of hope will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Amen. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, when you trust in him, that joy, that peace, it's going to overflow you with the confidence that you need in order to see yourself through every situation and every circumstance. That comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. God's joy enables the believer to be victorious over every obstacle and circumstance and become stronger and more courageous. See, that's even in the midst of every trial and every tribulation that you have. No matter what's going on, His joy enables every believer to be victorious. Even in this time of the year, I'm going to tell you, some people are really going through some battles right now. Yeah. I, there have been people that lost their jobs this past week, right before Christmas. Yeah. Didn't have a job. Thought they were going to enjoy a good Christmas and nothing. There were those that companies folded. No pension plans. Nothing. And I'm trying to tell you to, to be joyful about it. Yes, I am. Because you can't think and dwell upon the feeling of joy. But you got to know that you got to trust God. And when you get to the point where you really trust God, you look beyond your circumstances. You look beyond your situations. And you see that there is a God who's got your best interest at heart. And he's got something special for you. And he's going to see you through and bless you beyond your own imagination through the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, God. Amen. James 1, 2 through 4. My you brethren, count it all joy. Mm when you fall into various trials, mm. knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Count it all joy. He's telling you in the midst of all this stuff, you gotta count it all joy because that's going to work the patience that you're gonna need to make it through your situations and your circumstances. The testing of your faith produces that patience. Patience has its perfect work in you. You can be perfect and complete the task lacking nothing. See, the problem is we think we know what we want. We think we know what we need. God knows everything that you need. He knows everything you want. He knows everything you desire. And we a lot of times want too much. We want to have buckets full and pallets full. But in all that actuality, you ought to realize that the things that you really need, God wants you to not lack any of it. Amen. And for you to have all that you need to God wants to bless you with that. 
See, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the fruits of the Spirit. But I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that love and peace surround the world joy. See that? Yes. God's love has been shown to us in the birth of Jesus Christ. That's, that is love. And God's peace helps us to overcome every situation that the world has to throw at us. How do you know that? John 3.16 for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. See, God's love. He sent his son, his only son to the world, that whoever would believe in him, have that faith in him, trust him, trust his word, trust his guidance. He says, you will not perish. You won't fall. You won't be hurt. You will not be devastated. You're going to make it through every situation. And on top of that, you're going to have eternal life. Now, this is what I want you to not do. I don't want you to start judging your eternal life with the life you're living in on earth. Because, see, if you only have the perspective of how you're living now, I'm here to tell you. It's a total different experience than everlasting life. See, right now you got aches and pains. I woke up this morning with a couple of them. Yeah, I felt that bad boy. But see, there's no pain there. See, there's no sorrow. There's no grief. There's no lack. There's no want. Everlasting. And that's all because you believe and you trust in him. See, he didn't send his son into the world that we condemn the world. And that's what's a big problem with the, the Christian community today. We are condemning everybody. We're not to condemn the world. Now, actions and circumstances, situations, we condemn the spirit of sin. Amen. That's what you are to condemn. But people... God said he didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but that the world through him, the world through Jesus Christ, would be saved. That's why I got to tell you, you got to know what Jesus did so that you could do the things that Jesus did. And then John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, he Amen. gave you peace. Amen. Just like that worldview of joy that's dealing with just a feeling, mm -hmm. he's giving you peace that is not like the world's view of peace. No matter what happens. The world's view of peace means, well, we ain't fighting. <laughs> no, that's not God's peace. God's peace that means that in the midst of your storm, there is calm. In the midst of your want and your desire, there is still plenty. In the midst of your confused mind, he's giving you evenness so that you can see beyond your situations and circumstances and live that joyful, peaceful life that he has set before you. And this is one other thing I want you to know. The joy of the Lord is also good for our health. Amen. 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 I was, um, I think the very first time that they rushed me uh, to the emergency room. And uh, before I found out through uh, the various tests that I had, that I had blood clots in my, both of my lungs. 
And uh, when they got me into the emergency room and they were taking my blood pressure, it was steadily going down. Uh, I'm sitting in there cracking jokes. I'm laughing. I'm having a good time. And one of the nurses came in and said, wow, every time he laughs, his blood pressure goes up. And when I'd stop, you know, get some breaths and all, because I was short of breath, it would start to go down. But then I, I got, God would just drop a thought in me, and Michelle sitting there, and we're just talking, and I'm talking with the nurses and the doctors, and we're laughing, and I'm cracking jokes, and my blood pressure would go up, didn't it, baby? It did. Blood pressure would go up. Joy. joy. God's joy. It's good for your health. Amen. See, it does not pay for you to, even if you're sick, tag like you're sick. Thank you. Come on now. I'm not telling you to deny that you're sick, but you need to be able to overcome that sickness, having a spirit of joy, knowing that number one, it ain't lasting always. Amen. Jesus, Amen. it's going to dissipate, and God is already standing there ready with your healing. <laughs> Turn that cough into a laugh. <laughs> and watch that cough go away. I'm so, I am so serious. I believe this in God. I know it because God, they had to kick me out of ICU. Because I was having too much fun. I was making too much noise. <laughs> See, and I never you know, it's the first time I've mean, visited people in the ICU before, and it's a quiet place. Very quiet. Very stoic. Man, I was in ICU. <laughs> Nurses come by, I'm talking loud, I'm having a good time, and all the time they're telling me you dying. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. I'm having too much fun. They had to kick me out of ICU. You can't stay in here. You're making too much noise. <laughs> I had too much joy. Because God was doing something in me, for me, yeah. with me. I had an opportunity while I was there to witness the nurses, to talk to the doctors about the goodness of God. I had a job to do. It wasn't about me. It was all about God. So I could have that joy that was needed in order to turn a bad Amen. situation Amen. into a good thing. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. This is the thing that we need to understand. Proverbs 17.22 in the English Standard Version says a joyful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bone. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's true. It does. When you feel you've been defeated, you're going to look like you're defeated. Yes. You're going to act like you're defeated. Yes. But a joyful heart, that's good medicine. That turns all that defeat into a victory. The enemy can't understand it. He wants you so full of defeatedness that that's all you do is walk around with a sourpuss face, mm -hmm. look like you've been sucking on lemons all day long, <laughs> head hung down, oh woe is me, when God is telling you, man, I'm your strength. I'm your strength. I got something for you. Turn it into joy. Psalms 30 and 11 in the Living Bible says, Then he turned my sorrow into joy. He took away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Amen. God wants to do that for you. Yes. I don't care how bad your situation is, God wants to turn your sorrow into joy. He's got a way of looking at your bad situation and showing you there's good even in your bad situation because he's working out something. Amen. So a lot of times, you, I'm telling you, a lot of times your bad situation ain't about you. I am a firm believer that the things that I went through, in and out of the hospital, in and out of the emergency room, I'm a firm believer it had nothing to do with me. I guarantee you there were people that hadn't been praying in years that got on their knees and was praying for me. Amen. What about me? God was trying to get their attention. Just using my situation. God wants to use your situation to help bless somebody else. Amen. So you can't look at that woe is me. You got to look like, oh, great is God. Amen. Because he's got something for you. 
It's good medicine. At this time of the year, we must not only embrace the joy of the Lord, but we've got to also spread that joy to others. We have to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is good news. Psalms 96 and 2 in the New King James says, Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Amen. Thank you. You got to proclaim good news. What's good news? Depends on what a person's situation is. Mm -hmm. Are you, are, you, are you broke? You ain't got no money? Here's good news. God wants to prosper you. You sick today? Guess what? I got good news. By his stripes, you are healed. You don't have a job? I got good news for you. God has got to, he, he's got to open, he says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That blessing is a job. The blessing is you being able to help somebody else. God's got many things in store for you. That's good news. And you've got to spread it to others. You can't just keep it for yourself. There are people that are dependent on you. And they don't even know that they're dependent on you. But God wants you in a particular place, in a particular time, to bless them. I remember you all telling me, the last, was the last week, the week before last, that you were in the store. And that, and that cashier. That just happened to have an opportune time to bless you all and you bless them. See, everybody's got an appointment. You have an appointment to bless somebody. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Give that good news. You may not even know when it is, but I guarantee you, when that time comes, he's going to shine that light. And that opportunity is going to come. Don't waste it. Don't squander it. Utilize that time to do God's work and do His will. Spread that gospel. As we celebrate this Christmas, really want you to take the time to know the reason for this season. It's not about jingle bells. It's not about Santa Claus. It's not about reindeers. It's not about frosty and snowmen. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. He came to earth that you and I might have a right to the kingdom of God. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. It's time for us to really get ready to enjoy this holiday time, this time of blessings for God. As we give our all to him. Doesn't matter. If you don't have a lot of stuff up under a tree, it don't matter if you don't have a tree. Amen. I guarantee you, if you put God first in your thought processes for this season, I guarantee you, you're going to find joy you didn't know you had. You're going to find some peace you never knew existed. You're going to be able to bless somebody else with all that is within you. I'm reminded of, um, I think it was Peter, I can't really remember who he was with, but they were going in through a gate called Beautiful. And there was a blind man, a beggar man, who was at the gate, begging arms. And they asked Peter for money. One of the things that Peter said was, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, Give I thee. In the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. And the man got up and walked. And did not have to beg anymore. Because what he gave him was what was a part of him. And I'm going to guarantee you, if you give somebody a part of your heart this Christmas season, I guarantee you, somebody's going to be blessed, but you're going to be blessed even more. Amen? Amen. And amen. Joy to the world our Lord has come.